Welcome to Chrisman Garage. Today we got us a 2000 Toyota Thunder green flavor. Yeah, we've uh, we've worked on this thing before. We've done a few front end tools to it. Wants to put some brakes on it now with a uh, with some wheel bearing. Now I know that most of y'all that click on this video are gonna be like, I want to see how them stupid wheel bearings get pressed in. Well, I'm gonna show you. First of all, you got to take the spindle off. See there? That's your lower ball joint. Your lower ball joint is made into your tie rod end. So when you take those four bolts off the bottom, the 14 millimeter pops right off. You get all the other stuff off. And come over here, I'll show you how the rest of this. Man, this thing really is stuck in your teeth really bad, but I'll show you how the rest of this thing goes together. Come on. Over here at this handy dandy 20 ton Harbor Freight Press, that's what you need to change these old wheel bearings out. And I'll show you something else you need. See this, this rotor that we took off the front? Yeah, you're going to need that too. I'll show you how you need that. Looks like the last person used this press. I ate at Wendy's. Hmm. Hmm. Dr. Pepper. All right. It's hotter than a one arm paper hanger out here. No, that's how busy I am. It's hotter than a mud fence. No, that's how ugly I am. It's hotter than a well digger's butt out here. I guess that depends on the climbing outside, doesn't it? It's hot. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. Once you get the, the old spindulum off, and if you don't know how to get the spindle off, you have no business changing this, this band. I'm just going to give you that heads up right now. If you can't get the spindle off, don't even try to change this bearing. I think they make a tool for this. Mm, this one. Mm. Look at that. How many people can say they got one of them off without bending? Look at that. Don't need that. Hold on. Let's see here. What do you get? If you look down in here, come over here and check this out. It's got this thing that has been hmm. pushed over. We got to push that back over. You're supposed to use a chisel. We're going to use this old screwdriver. Hmm. Remember, lefty, lefty, loosey, loosey. This is a two-wheel drive too, fellas. The four-wheel drive is a little different. I don't think it's got this, this spanner nut in here. That hurt really bad. You're gonna want to beat on that spanner nut like it owes you money. <laughs> Once you get the old spanner nut off, we didn't booger it up too bad. You see there, this thing right here, we'll probably polish her up some before we put her back in there. But she screwed down like this little spacer in there, too, fellas. Let's see if I can get the little spacer out. I know how to get the spacer out. Okay, spacer removed. There it is. All right, once you get your spacer out, that went against the bearing. This went on top, just like that. We're gonna put it back together when we go back together with a new bearing. We'll set it there so I forget where it's at. We was doing a brake job. So you got this rotor here, right? What I'm gonna do is, I got four sockets that are roughly the same size. I'm gonna set them up. I think that's going to be close. 
Look at that. Then, mm. this is what a lot of people don't show you. They're like, oh yeah, you just press it out and you press it back in, but they don't tell you how you got the set stupid press up. That's the aggravating part. Now, you can take these little pieces here, and this is kind of a multi-step process. Once again, this is a Harbor Freight press, 20 ton press. We're gonna set this thing right up in here. Set it up under there, like that. Make sure it's sitting on them, them bolts. And see now, you've got a little bit of room to push it out. You can line up. It's probably going to be able to push it about an inch or so. And then we'll have to readjust how it goes. But I've got this socket right there that lines just about up with it. And you can normally finagle it in the middle. All right, once you get it all set up, here you go. Put a little bit of... I think I just peed a little. No, she's going. Hmm, we might have bottomed down with something already. Now in essence, what we're trying to do is and we're pushing out on that hub. I want it to line up with the stud holes so I can get maximum movage. I think I'm going to need some water. Exactly what I wanted it to do. Let me push the back side of the bearing out. Alright. Now, if you're one of the lucky ones that the bottom half of your bearing stays on the spindle and you ain't got no fire wrench, you might be able to heat it up and knock it off or do something, but I think I got it. I think I got something here that may, I hope, goes up under there. What we have accomplished is we've split it. It's cracked. It's hard to see there, but it's cracked all the way down through here. It's broke loose now. So I should be able to just proper. Let's see if this thing will fit up under there now. I'm not even going to look and see if it's moving. I'm just going to go till something pops.
sure how that was gonna work, but it worked good. Once you get that out, then you gotta press this old bearing out. Let me show you how to do that. get all your forging and material out of the way. Hmm. Put a little flat piece of steel right there. Put us some more space taper. There she went, fellas. It would have been a lot easier if it still had a little hook on there, but. I mean, I didn't really beat and pry on that thing. It was just off when I got in there. So this truck's been worked on before, so. Tap, 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 tap around the edge here. Because this is the way this seal works, is this seal presses against the hub. That's what seals it. It's just a, you could actually leave it out and it'd probably be fine. Matter of fact, when I took the other one apart, it didn't have one on. She's on there. She's good and down, flush. Make sure she's flush all the way around. She looks good. Now it's time to go back in with the hub later. Okay, I've got it supported down there on the inner part of the bearing because when you're pushing through that inner part of the bearing, you can separate the bearing out. Then you messed up your bearing, you're starting all over again. So, and I'm pushing on the hub here. So, let's see, y'all. Uh, see if she'll go in. gonna bottom out on that piece I put down there and stop. Okay, she just bottomed out. So what I'm gonna do now is some people would probably just keep right on shine down on it. Yeah. Yeah. Through the first barren or the first side of the barren make it through the second side you got to put this on first so we're gonna put it down like that and you gotta make sure you're centered in there 
There went that pair. She had it seal rides up on the back. She's like money now. All right. Now all we got to do is the first thing that we did three or seven months ago. Spacer goes on. Little spanner socket. Thread right on there. It only takes three or seven minutes to get it started. Make sure throw it right on there. Once you get it started three or seven times. Yeah. She's fixing to be stopped. Just about money right there, fellas. Yep, money. Now we're gonna dimple this thing. Just like that. How many dimples do you put in it? Three or seven. Three or seven. Feels good. If you hadn't ripped three or seven holes in your gloves, you wouldn't want it right here. Put that thing back up there like this. Voila! Just so you know, I didn't bend any of this. Somebody else bent that, but make sure when you put it back together, it's sitting drugging on you. On your rotor. But like I said, if you, if you don't know that, you don't have a business working with this wheel bearing. So, with that being said, fellas, there's your wheel bearing in old two-wheel drive 2000 Tundra. If you got a 2000 Tundra, the wheel bearings is giving trouble, they's probably going to the bad. Mm -hmm.